Okay, so here I have a wave file that is a it's a drum loop, and I'd like to slice it up and rearrange it and do whatever. So I can I can pull it in to to a track here. There we go. Now uh, I already knew the the tempo of the drum loop. I knew that it was 107. Um, and there are ways, if you don't know the tempo, to determine it. Um, you, you can find the tempo. Um, right here, sound by tempo. Um, you can use that to analyze, and, and it will put you in the ballpark of the, the sound bites tempo. So what I want to do is I have snap to beat turned on and I have snap to grid turned off because what I want to do is I want to cut this thing on the beats. Uh, I, I don't want to necessarily uh, cut them on, on the grid. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the beat sensitivity and the beat detection until I have an appropriate number of beats showing up. So, go adjust beat detection. So I'm gonna that looks like a pretty good number of beats. So I'll apply that. Okay. Now I can use the scissors tool. I can just hold down the scissors tool and slide it across the whole sound bite. And there we go. And there's a lot of slices there. There's more than I really intended, but uh, let's just keep going and, and see what happens. So I have this slice at the beginning that's not doing me any good. So I'll take that off, and then I know that there's a tail on here that this loop is actually longer than eight measures, and I, I want it to only be eight measures. And so, see if we do that. So I want to take off these two slices at the end. So get rid of those. All right. Now I have a whole bunch of slices that I can rearrange and I can do whatever with. So an easy way to rearrange these and to get started here is to have another track right below. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so I can manipulate these easier. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull them straight down into the next track. Now what's important is that I have snap to beat on and snap to grid is off because when I uh, pull them, so here I'll show you. So if I take some, some slices down into the track below, See, I'm not really paying attention to where I'm bringing them. I'm just putting them anywhere. Okay. All right. So, good. All right, so let's start to put this back in. So if I have snap to beat on, then it enables me to put it right there at the edge of the old beat. Or the old at the other slice, right? So here we go. I'll move this one over here. You know, the the sum of the links of the slices is always the same. And so as long as you don't uh, duplicate slices, you can mix them around any way you want and they will, they will always end up fitting back. You might have to slide things over to make them fit, but they will always there will always be a way to get them to fit. Um, if you start to duplicate uh, slices, then 
they may or may not fit depending on how long the slice is. Um, so, you know, I'm just rearranging, rearranging. I don't know what it's going to sound like, and I don't really care. Is that, that's where I had it in the first place, isn't it? Let's put this there. Let's put this there. There. And then let's, let's just change this up quite a bit. Okay. And what do we have? So now, one trick that I like to do is I can bring the original. So now I have rearranged these slices, and you know we can theoretically say that I've rearranged them all, and that this sounds very different than the original one. And so I can take the original uh, loop and put it in the track below. Now I still have these tails on the beginning and end, so I'm going to have to get rid of those. Okay, so I am I make sure that my snap to beat is selected, and I select the scissors tool. There we go. I just selected the scissors tool with C by holding down C. Now I'm going to cut right there, and I'll cut on this beat at the beginning. There we go. Now I can get rid of those extraneous pieces okay then I'll slide this into position <laughs> and if I go into the mixer I can pan one of them hard left and the other hard right <laughs> Why isn't that uh, mixing board pop out? There we go. All right, so in my mixing board, I'll pan one of them hard left and one of them hard right. And it just gives you, you know, an effect that you may or may not like, depending on the loop. Um, just experimentation is key, and it works with different source materials differently. Um, something that it works really well on is if you have uh, arpeggios, you know, uh, that's not, like not a drum beat, but if you have um, a scale, like a synth scale, uh, climbing up and down, uh, you can rearrange the arpeggios and uh, play them panned hard left and hard right, and then get some really cool effects that way. Um, things that you never would have thought to play the first time. So, um, anyways, I hope that that's of some use to you. And uh, I learned how to do this by watching other videos on YouTube. So, um, you know, credit is not all mine in terms of idea authorship. But... Um, Hopefully this will just help you on your way. All right, thanks.